very exciting panel. I think it builds nicely on the previous panel because we've got now a global representation. And I think it's very important to understand what it takes to get the government support in terms of policies and regulations, not only locally where you are, but also globally. Let me start with you, Mr. Yalain. I understand you are operating in 170 countries outside of, of yes. Japan. Yeah. Uh, outside of, of China. And uh, tell us a little bit about your organization, and then in terms of the policies and regulations that you are uh, working with locally and what you would like to see in terms of enhancements, improvements, but also globally with the countries you're partnering with. Yeah, our organization is 70% uh, is uh, from China, but uh, the 30% is global. So now our product is shipped to the over the 100 uh, different countries. So we not only need the uh, local the government support, but also we need the global the the culture and the policy the support. This is very important. And for the Chinese, I think uh, we not only need the just like a supply chain and the ecosystem, we to share to different the uh, platform for the unicorn the enterprise, and also we need to the government to help the the unicorn the enterprise to help get the uh, innovation ability and also the innovation the center, yeah. Excellent, so we're talking a little bit about the ecosystem, the, the innovation support, and, and the drive around that. Uh, Mr. Yong Yoon Kim, welcome. And uh, great story around uh, a complete tourism and travel environment that you have put in place, again, working in more than 170 countries around the world. Um, give us a little bit of a view of what your unicorn is doing, but then also what kind of government support you have received and you are looking for. <clears throat> uh, thank you. So Yanuja is the largest and the uh, fastest growing company in the travel sector in Korea. Also, we are global number two hospitality solution provider in 170 countries. I would like to start from the definition of unicorn. Unicorn is the animal which exists only in the imagination. So if any company can do the job very well, definitely they can be valued as a one billion, but it's not unicorn, I think, because it's possible to imagine. So in that sense, I believe that unicorn should transform the industry from old into new. So in that sense, I think there are three areas government should support. First, regulation. Sometimes, Old business model can be protected by regulation. Regulation is the reason why new technology and business model cannot be made well. So in that sense, definitely, all the local governments should change the regulation with could fit with the new technology. Also, the government should synchronize with the other governments because regulation is very similar with standardization. If standard is totally different from the new technology, definitely the government cannot support the new business model well. Second, data lake. I believe that data lake is very important as a government support. I'm a member of digital government committee in Korea, and I try to let government understand why government should make a SaaS cloud solution, and they should develop the data lake in the cloud. For example, immigration data 
it's very helpful for us to transform the customer's experience totally different from old one. We need to do many things during the immigration, but it's possible to totally transform the customer journey. Last one is about technology foundation. As I told you, cloud, AI, many talents, those kind of the foundation should be supported by government. That's it. Thank you, and I think it's a, it's a good uh, uh, segue when you say the new business or the new industry and, and the traditional industry and how can the government regulate for, for once. And I think you touched on key points, which is data and cloud, because we are mainly operating in, in the digital economy. Um, Imran, you are in the classified portals business, again, very much in the digital economy. And uh, when we spoke about uh, the considerations on policy and government support, uh, you were very specific about the fact that there are certain aspects that are important to investors, certain aspects that are important to the customers, and also then to the, to the people who are actually working in these organizations. Uh, give us a bit of a view on, on your story and your experience and why you chose Dubai. Assalamu alaikum. Um, hi everyone. Thank you for having me, first of all. Um, we started our journey back in 2012, and our company, we were operating in um, the U UAE, Pakistan, and a few other countries in the region, including Egypt, Jordan, and a few others. What we do is we operate marketplaces. Um, in China, I think the closest example would be 58.com, where uh, people can sell their goods, uh, advertise their properties, jobs, cars on the platform. And we operate in 15 countries, all the way from Mexico to the Philippines. But our core business is uh, in the Middle Eastern region, the greater MENA region. Some of our brands are Bayuth, Dubizel, OLX, again in the greater MENA region. Um, we did a re-domiciliation exercise. Uh, we were based in England, our head office. And this was in 2018. We hired one of the big four accounting firms, a law firm, and a few consultants. And they looked at a lot of geographies where we could re-domicile ourselves. Now, we did have a business here, and we were doing really well. But this exercise was more than that. And, and the short list which they gave us was four countries, and there were lots of variables. But the variables which stood out for our investors and shareholders, uh, these are very large institutional investors out of the US, UK, and Europe. Uh, the first one over there was tax. Now, the, I think the obvious one is tax rate, but what was very important was the double tax treaty. Because companies over here, they end up operating in, let's say, five, six different geographies, and any tax or any profits being taxed in one country when they come up to the, let's say, the parent company or that jurisdiction, are they going to be double taxed? And there are treaties between governments, and UAE had the most favorable treaties with the geographies we were operating in. Um, the other one was Netherlands, which was almost at par with the UAE. So, so we thought that was very, very progressive of the UAE back in the days to do that. Um, the second one was 100% ownership of the business. Uh, in some categories, in some industries, in some sectors, we can't have 100% ownership. And we have to create these structures with corporate service providers, and which becomes a bit challenging. So ease of doing business, I believe, you know, sort of UAE, again, has this 100% ownership in the free zones. There are other benefits as well, obviously, of free zones. The third and the most important factor for our investors back then in 2018 was a legal framework. Uh, the legal framework in some of the free zones in the UAE that allows common law applicability. And, and imagine these investors sitting in the US managing tens or hundreds of billions of dollars. They have their own law firms. They have their own internal legal counsels. And what they need is um, comfort on the legal side. Uh, so the common law really, really helps because that, doesn't, that stops the creation of an extra layer of a local counsel um, and then these deals have to be signed off. These investments have to be signed off. And then secondly, uh, enforceability is obviously very important as well. And they drew a lot of comfort from that. And that's when we moved uh, to the DIFC. And, and it's been a great five-year journey in DIFC for us. And a testament to that personally for me is that three of our large institutional investors, two in the US, one in UK, they have their offices now in DIFC. Well, two in DIFC, one in Abu Dhabi, but again in the UAE. Excellent. I think these are key policies 
that every unicorn would probably be interested in understanding and, and, and seeking uh, some support from the government in order to create an environment that attracts these kind of things. Then we go back to you, <coughs> uh, Mr. Chow. How do you uh, initiate and have the dialogue and the conversation with government on policies and on regulations that support the, let me call it, the, the new economy that we are talking about, uh, the discussions about data, the discussions about the ecosystem, as you mentioned, the discussion around innovation. What platforms do we use normally? Um, because we, the 70% of the revenue is uh, global, so we are very the, need the strong, the interesting for the different country to discuss the, the policy. And uh, I think first they need the, the government need to have the open, the marketing, because IP3 is of course the high technology and uh, the total solution, the provider of the digital the economy and uh, the super the computing and IDC and also the server, the different data to computing. So we need to ex expand the all the, the product to different country. And uh, second means we need a, a fair and uh, just the environment to how to protect the the environment the, to get to the the fair the marketing and. Uh, so the, the, the smart and also the property, the protected the system is very important. And the third means, and also the different countries, the, the policy also the encouragement of the, the, the uh, enterprise to get the uh, easy to uh, export or uh, into the country because uh, this is in confidence is very important uh, for the enterprise to get to the marketing and uh, in and out yeah exactly and I think you are in this situation where you're dealing with many partners across the world that are your trade partners let me call it absolutely mr. Kim I think you're in the business of data so AI, blockchain, cloud is, is at the core of what you're doing. And, and when we see that this technology is probably moving faster than anticipated and is disrupting more of the traditional systems than we have, what is your ask from your government that is uh, kind of uh, where you operate, but also as you're doing this in 170 countries, what what is the the view of policies and regulations? Uh, I know in Europe we have the GDPR. We have in in the U.S. different forms of data. I'm sure in Korea we've got uh, other forms. In the UAE we're working on the data law as well. So, how how does that impact you? And what would you like to see? Uh, first of all, the government should understand what the technological evolution trend. I think in words and in one sentence, from centralized into decentralized. Why we should think about the data? Why we should think about AI? I think in the past, we should have many agencies across the value chain. Very complicated, very long, and so many the agencies we should have because we did not have technology to sync between the supplier and the consumer directly. So agents are very important and necessary in the past. But recently, we have had many kinds of the digital technologies to sync between the supplier and consumer. But still, we should have uh, many agencies because of the regulation I just told you and also, like because the due to lack of the understanding in technological evolution of the government, we cannot transform. So recently, I have heard about ChatGPT. 
We tap GPT, think about the future. Recently, we should search, for example, the co Korean consumer should use the Yanolja application to search what's the best hotel, leisure, golf courses, and flight, and so on. But if using the chat GPT directly, then they don't have to open application of Yanolja. The chat GPT just let the consumer know what's the best travel journey for them. Then, no agencies, no offline, offline agencies, no online agencies, direct connect between consumer and the supplier. So I think digital technology like a cloud, data, blockchain, internet of things, those kind of technologies are showing the very clear direction into decentralization. So I hope all the government should think about what's the best regulation, data rake, public data rake, and the technological foundation support from the government perspective. And then if the government are well ready, well prepared for that future, probably in that country, there may be huge number of the unicorns in, within the 10 years, I think. No, I think this is a great point because preparing the infrastructure for the digital economy is key. As most of these unicorns are operating in this new uh, economy. Um, in the UAE, they've launched VARA, which is Virtual Assets Regulation Authority. And I think uh, it is a forward-looking step uh, definitely building on a number of rules and regulations and policies that are addressing data and cloud and, and so on. Imran, you are, again, you're in the business of data. Yes. Every day. You are in the business of cloud. You are in the business of virtual assets. What would you like to see? How would you like this sure. conversation to develop? So we take data and privacy very, very seriously, and we have an internal legal team because we're in 15 countries and these policies and frameworks are very fluid across different borders. Uh, we also have a security team which sits in our Romanian tech office. We have a large office in Cluj, Napoca in Romania. And, and, and we try to adhere to, actually we do adhere to best international practices when it comes to data and privacy. The first time we spoke of data uh, to a layperson like me, it was, okay, the government is trying to protect the user's information. But then we looked into it and there were four areas which we identified. The first one was compliance. Obviously, we have to comply. But I believe it's before compliance, it's more ethical. We have to protect our users' data. It's our job. And that, obviously, then the func a function of that is compliance, therefore. The second one, which we looked at, was users' trust and brand credibility. Because trust sort of inspires, instills loyalty. Our customers come back to the platform if they trust the platform. So we have to, when we, when we say, OK, do you accept these privacy rules, we're telling the user we're going to protect you. We're going to protect your data. And that actually creates trust. But at the same time, uh, there, there's a lot of research in this area, which actually we had to go through this exercise. As a young startup, you don't think about these things. But as you mature, you have more responsibility and more users to protect. And when you tell the users you're going to protect them, that creates an emotional link with the brand. The user and the brand, they come together. And that is, is very, very valuable for us. The third one, I would say, is preservation of business value. This, there was a research study by Forbes that if there's a data breach, businesses risk losing 46% of their customers. So that's 46% of the customers taking their business elsewhere. And guess where they're going to go? To, to competitors. So, so it preserves business value. And the fourth one, I would say, is investor trust. A lot of our investors are in, I would say, more advanced jurisdictions from a data privacy policy framework. And obviously, then they need that trust. Also, uh, any data breaches, obviously, then one has to explain to future investors. As startups, we are continuously raising money because we're planning for the future. We're not sort of really, let's say, margin focused in the early days. And, uh, and that's the fourth point. And I think what I'm trying to get to is that data and privacy frameworks and policies is not just about the users. It's as much about the companies as well, about us, right? It's not just protecting us, it's helping us grow, it's creating that trust, it's preserving our business value. And, and I think as companies, we should all think about these policies as beneficial to us, not just a policing check on us. And, and that's, I think, that's sort of 
with that mindset, uh, we have worked with some sort of uh, authorities, and I believe in the UAE specifically, now there is a framework, and, and I think the skeletal structure and the foundation is there, and it's, it's going to fast evolve on data and privacy. And the engagement levels in the UAE have been tremendous with, with the industry. Uh, we have been told what's coming, we have been heard, and, and that creates a really good ecosystem uh, on the data and privacy. So I think this is a very important subject, and, 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 and it's, it's very, very important, and generally for the larger region as well, I think it's gonna be very, very helpful if these policies and frameworks are put into place across the region. Well, thank you. I think more and more we are in the business of data. We are relying on technologies like blockchain, AI, and, and cloud uh, in most of, of the, the discussions that we are having. Going back to China, um, what platforms do we have in order to communicate with the decision makers on policies that we are expecting to have? Uh, to support these new unicorns or the creation of, of this environment? Uh, for Chinese, uh, the government, I think the, the first is uh, uh, optimization of the uh, regional, the industry, the, uh, the construction is very important. And also, uh, they need to share the, the platform, the resource, and also build the smart the management for the infrastructure. And uh, second means we <coughs> need to encourage of the innovation and also to help to the uh, uh, unicorn to build the innovation, the ability, and uh, build the innovation center, and also to have the, the solid, the property, the, product, the uh, protection the system. Uh, and a third me, uh, you know, some of the product is uh, we not only the one company, we need many, many companies to build. It. So the supply chain, the ecosystem is very important for the government. So not only support the one the enterprise, we need the total the the enterprise need the total support. So the supply chain you need the very strong. They can do the diversity to different uh, product. Yeah, great. Uh, Mr. Kim, let me conclude with, this, with you on this. Um, what would you like to see in terms of the dialogue moving forward on these virtual assets conversations, AI, ethics, and AI uh, transformation? How, how do you manage that within your business? Recently, I felt there is no borderline between the countries and between the industries. For example, Anuja is the, the largest company reading the entertainment business in Korea. So we are selling more than 70% of the tickets, concert, musical, class. So for example, BTS, Blackpink, Psy, those kind of artists are, depends on our solution to sell or to um, make the audience or the consumers acknowledge their the concert and musical. Why? So Yanoja was the company for the accommodation, flight, and leisure facilities only. But recently, we are doing the business for the entertainment, corp, and the other travel-related industries. No borderline. So in this sense, integration between the industry is the most important factor everybody should consider. That's the reason why data lake is the first agenda government should consider. Data lake is the next generation, the hub and platform. And if government try to think about the data lake, and probably they can understand what's the best way to incorporate all kinds of the industries into one, and definitely, they should think about how to collaborate with the other governments to globalize their standards with the other countries. So in this sense, integration is very important. And again, no borderline between the industry and the countries. I agree. Thank you very much. I think this has been a very insightful uh, panel. We've seen examples from China, from Korea, from the UAE. I think the dialogue is, is improving. We all find ourselves in the new digital economy. 
data is an important aspect of everything we're talking about, AI, cloud, the infrastructure that goes with it. And then, of course, the policies that regulate this. More and more, these are converging uh, policies, and, and we, we're probably going to be more in a global digital economy than, than we thought we would be faster than, than we were. Okay. Thanks a lot for being with us today, and, and great to have you. Thank you. Pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.